Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide and in this video we're going to talk about uh, MQTT Keeper Lives. Now MQTT uses a TCP IP connection to the broker and this connection is held open just like a, a telephone call is held open. Now if no data flows down this open connection for a certain period of time then the client doesn't know whether or not the connection to the broker is still there or it's been lost. So what happens is after a certain period of an activity it generates a ping request and it expects to receive from the broker a ping response. Now that exchange of ping request and ping response confirms that the connection is working and if it doesn't get that exchange the ping request and ping response then the connection is is closed and it will actually be force closed by, by the broker. Now this period um, is known as the keep alive period, so the period that it waits before it, it generates a ping request uh, is the keep alive period. Now the default period in the Python uh, MQTD client is 60 seconds and you can change that and it's changed in the connection method and here's the code here that shows you and you can see there the keep alive uh, defaults to 60. There it is there. Now I've just got a I'll create a, a simple Python test script and all it does is connect to the broker and holds the connection open but it doesn't do anything. It uh, stays inactive. Now the actual client code that I've written doesn't actually generate the ping requests and respond to the ping responses. That's done in the background by the uh, the client class itself but you do need to make sure that you're running a loop. You know, if you're not running a loop, it won't work. So this is the broker view. And what I've done here is I've actually connected my client to it and I've started the broker in verbose mode so I can actually see it. And I've turned the uh, keep alive period down so we can actually see some activity. And you can see here that we're getting a ping request and we're responding with a ping response. And you can see they're going away at regular intervals. And say so I've set it to 20 seconds. Now on the client side, I've enabled login using the following bit of code. And then you set the callback using this bit of code here. So that lets us see what's going on. And you can see, we see the very similar thing here. We see the client sending the ping request and it receiving the ping response from the server. Now what I've done now is I've actually got the client and I've gone into send data. So we're actually publishing data. But if you look further down, we're sending ping requests and we're getting ping response. So even though we're publishing data at regular intervals, we're still getting the ping request and the ping response. Now, this is because it's not only publish, you don't only need to publish the data, you also need to receive data. So it works on sending and receiving, not just on sending. So now I've adjusted the uh, client script so it subscribes to the same topic that I'm publishing on so I will receive messages so now we see a different story here so now we're sending messages and we're receiving messages and you should notice when you look down here that we have no ping requests and no ping response and that's because the channel is active and it the client knows it's active so it doesn't need to send it so remember that you'll get a ping request and ping response if you don't send or receive data. So it's not a question of just sending data or receiving data. You have to be doing both. Otherwise, you will generate a ping request, ping response. So what happens when it all goes wrong? So if you have a connection failure or the keep alive is non-zero, uh, if you set it to z zero, it actually suppresses the keep uh, the ping request ping response so it doesn't send it so providing it's non-zero the server doesn't receive a control packet from the client within one half times the keep alive period whatever that is 
uh, it must disconnect the network connection. And we can see that here in the next slide. So what I've done now is I've modified the client. Uh, I've hacked into the code and I basically stopped it sending a ping request. And again, I've shortened the period of the keep alive. And you can see here we've connected to the broker and I've just got a timer, the times of seconds, and you can see here we've got a forced disconnect coming from the from the broker here. And because I'm running a loop, the client will reconnect. So again, we see a, a, re, a connection knowledge measurement message. Sorry. And so I'm connected, and again we go a period of time here, and we get forced disconnected by the broker. You can't see any ping requests, ping responses, because I've suppressed them from the from the client. But you can see what happens when you don't get them. The broker disconnects you. OK, um, just finish off with some resources. There is an article on the site. Um, that's a bad URL there. It shouldn't be there. So there's the tutorial on the site. And if you go to the, the site, um, you'll find some links to other tutorials you might find interesting, all related to MQTT. And you can see retain messages, last will, and username and password, and other resources. Okay, um, just to finish off, uh, some resources that you might be interested in the um, there's an article on the site or tutorial on the site MQTD Keeper Lives and that's a bad URL there I've just crossed it out and if you go to that tutorial you'll also find links to other tutorials that you might find interesting so it's the end of the video and if you have any comments then leave the comments below if you like the video then just like it below and if you want to be notified of other videos then you can subscribe to the channel if you do go over to the site i do publish a, a newsletter that you can subscribe to if you're interested so that's the end of this video until next time bye